Uh, basically, in support of what you are saying right now, say for instance, uh, an entity A has a controlling share in, say, the unquoted script, whereas uh, the other entity has a minority stake, then probably the minority stakeholder will have to give a discount because the, the one that has the majority of the shares is in a position to take key decisions on the board and perhaps maybe using something like the earnings valuation model. Whereas the one that, is use, that, that, that has a minority stake would obviously have access to only the dividends that is subsequently declared by the board. So yes. it is entirely possible that uh, based on certain rationales, two entities may have different valuations. Different valuation. And I think that is why disclosure is extremely important. You have to disclose what are the factors you have considered in valuation, what are the assumptions you have used, so the users is fully aware of uh, what has happened uh, before the valuation. Let me, I think, just uh, give you my input on this uh, very uh, interesting debate that has started on the WEFA valuation. Um, because you, many of you will recall that, you know, one of the criticism on IFR, I, I, IS 39 was that it prescribed a lot of fair value. And there has been a school of thought within the accounting profession and within the investment community that there should be less of fair value and there, there has been also the other side. In fact, uh, when this financial crisis happened, uh, there was a lot of debate that, whether, you know, whether one should revert back to the cost model, you know. But, and, and in fact, this was one of the, one of the, um, most vocal criticism on the IS-39 and uh, I remember even this matter being raised in uh, G20 debate, you know, and sitting in IFAC, we were hearing and also at that time I was uh, chairman of the United Nations group of experts uh, where we had one uh, conference, you know, on the global financial crisis and the impact and what should happen. So it's a very interesting debate, but we have seen that uh, while there was so much criticism on IS-39 because of fair value, and a lot of people said there shouldn't be fair value, but it seems that IS-39 is carrying, giving us more fair value. We are <laughs> moving towards more fair value. What is important here to recognize and understand is, and I remember again hearing a presentation from this uh, CFA Institute, which uh, I attended, uh, you know, uh, and this presentation was given to the uh, Global Standard Setters meeting, which is organized annually by the IASB. And I don't know if we have any CFAs here. So, you, if you are the CFA, I understand that there are certain principles that the CFAs that the, have financial analyst community have developed and according to this presentation that was given to the IASB and the standard set setters, the first principle they said is that the only value that is relevant is fair, fair value. value. <laughs> so, th yeah. th that is the first. See. What is happening is that while when we had the old accounting which started with the cost model, we had all the objectivity into it. It's very easy to measure, you know, what was the historical cost, you depreciate the fixed assets, whatever you purchase was the cost and then you amortize or you depreciate and that kind of a thing. You're not concerned about the market. So, the most important principle at that point in time was objectivity. Compared to that, when you, but the problem with, with the objectivity and cost model was, was it relevant? The key issue for the investors, people who read the financial statements and take investment decisions is that whether or not the financial information is relevant. So what has happened over the years is there is a shift from objectivity to relevance. You see, an information may be 100% accurate, objective, but totally irrelevant for the decision making. 
So that's why there is more and more, I think, movement fair, to fair uh, towards fair value. And when you talk about fair value, remember, you know, the objectivity reduces and it is… fair value is all about your expectations, about estimations and about your future expectations of the market participants. How do you measure? Obviously, sitting in one company where you have different knowledge, different uh, assessment, uh, and, and sitting in different uh, in, in other company. Although, generally the valuation methodologies would be similar and there is a lot of guidance in the accounting literature and Aslan, I think maybe you should highlight that whether IFRS 9 itself contains valuation methodology guidelines. No. Where, I mean, no, no, what actually, should be that because as I understand, in the US gap, there is a which have, they, they had issued a complete standard actually, on valuation methodologies which was then issued by the ISB as a discussion paper. You know, ISB is uh, in the process of issuing a complete standard on fair value. Because I think that's based on the US uh, uh, standard, yeah. I, I don't remember uh, the n yeah. name, the title, but yep. now the, you know, the valuation methodology will become very important. Because, you know, yeah. fair value is it's a concept that is used across many standards in the IFRS, so they want to compile uh, one standard which determines how the fair value should be established and that standard should then be used for determining fair value. FASB has already done that. FASB, and I think uh, ISB and FASB is a joint project also so we, we I think uh, I'm not sure whether the exposure draft is released by ISB or not but certainly they're working on an exposure draft on the fair value basis. <laughs> Sir? Yeah, one simple last question. I would like to ask one simple last question is do you uh, actually, then I think we, uh, we are we short have questions. Time. Okay. Do yeah. we have any questions from the floor? Actually, I I would because you see this uh, 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 the exposure drafts is still to come. Yeah. What is more important is you know to discuss IFRS nine. So I would rather have you know more discussion on IFRS nine and see what is the response of the users and the preparers of the financial statements in terms of their enthusiasm to early adoption. I mean, if it is there. So, yes. Uh, my name is Asnan and uh, I am from A. Ferguson and Company. Uh, what I need to ask is, uh, uh, as far as banks and especially Islamic banks are concerned, uh, I think that uh, IFRS 9 has brought in more complexities as far as uh, uh, presentation or valuation of their financing is concerned or advances is concerned because previously in banks, if you apply 39 on banks, previously you were required to carry loans in uh, advances uh, as loan in advances previously. But now uh, since IFRS 9 is here, so first uh, you have to apply the business model and uh, ideally the business model will be to uh, get the cash flows from the from the advances portion, but uh, the second uh, point will be uh, quite uh, confusing. Uh, that uh, in order to meet the criteria, we have to uh, determine that uh, the payments should only be interest uh, should only be of the the repayments from that uh, loan should only be of the principal and interest payments. Yeah, but uh, I, when we see to the examples given, so it has defined, given a lot of examples in the application guidelines area that uh, which payments ex exactly are interest payment or which are not. Hmm. So uh, they have created a confusion that of uh, interest rate mismatch that uh, if the payments, if the KIBO rate is used of six month and we are paying three monthly and vice versa, then this is not the premium, uh, this is not a repayment. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, create uh, which contain the interest element. So now uh, it, it's an industry practice that normally repayments are made six monthly and Kybor uh, Kybor is repriced annually. So ideally, it does not meet uh, the second criteria, and uh, the loan will now be required to be carried at the fair value. No, no. Actually, the thing is that uh, regarding the Islamic banks, first of all, do not confuse uh, by the term interest. You know. Uh, I think it's a very interesting debate that uh, for Islamic banks, once you call that we are receiving interest, uh, it will be out of Islamic mode, and if you do not call it interest, it will basically 
dis disqualify you from amortized cost accounting. 